Hey, don't burn down my Strungeschuf, my Stug 4. I'll need it for my diorama. Luckily, I'll be experimenting with some water. Hope you enjoy. Hi, and welcome to Mr. Tig Military Models. Here is a quick preview. I love building realistic dioramas, trying awesome new kits, products and techniques. I built models when I was young and I'm just getting back into this great hobby. I get my inspiration from the fantastic model kits, watching awesome war movies and reading fascinating military history books. I hope you enjoy and look forward to your comments. I'm very excited to be building Dragon's Stug 4 late production for this diorama. There's only three of them left in the world today. Just over a thousand Stug 4s were produced from 1943 onwards using the Panzer 4 base. Each unit weighed 23 tonnes or just over 50,000 pounds. The main armament was the 7.540. Engine was a V12 and it had a maximum speed of 40 kilometres an hour. For my World War II diorama, I'm building Dragon Stug 4 late production smart kit. The kit includes PE and Magic Track links. The 135 kit went together really smoothly. The superstructure of the Stug 3 was mounted on the Panzer IV chassis with a box compartment for the driver added. In November 1943, Alcott, the manufacturer of the Stug 3, suffered damage due to an Allied bombing raid. To make up for the large deficit in production, Stug 4 production was now given full support. The secondary armament was the MG34 7.92mm with 600 rounds. I wasn't sure what angle the open hatch should be. What do you think? Leaf spring suspension, the maximum speed 40 kilometers an hour or 25 miles per hour. The shoes and space to armour skirting was made but not used in the design of this diorama. Many tanks also lost these in France amongst the hedgerows in battle. Magic tracks went together well in sections. Ground clearance for the Stug 4 is 40 centimetres. On some vehicles, metal return rollers were used instead due to a shortage of rubber.
Q-tips cut in half with tape are used to make the tracks more realistic. I experimented creating battle damage on the Strug using a big lighter and a pair of pliers. SS Panzer Abteilung 17 saw much action, arriving on the 10th of June 1944, just after D-Day in Normandy. On the 11th or 12th of June at Carrington. Also in June they saw action at the defence of saint Blaise sector at Arschenton. In August, remnants of the division were temporarily assigned to SS Panzer Dustreich. In August, remnants were also withdrawn from the line of combat to Chartrand for rest and refit. In September, refit west of Metz. Painting was done using ammo late German camouflages used in 1944 and 45. Initially, the airbrush was used to blow away any debris. Base colour will be Dunkelgelb. Tamiya Fine Surface Primer Oxide Red was sprayed over the upper surfaces. This was followed by heavy chipping fluid by AK, painted on with a paintbrush on all the main areas to be chipped. This was again followed with a coat of Dunkel Gill. Chipping was completed by using a brush with water, followed by the great Green Stuff World selection of abrasive brushes. Also for finer details, a wooden toothpick and a stiff older paintbrush. I wanted to experiment with this tank, doing some of the chipping prior to the camouflage coat. I wanted to show that camouflage had been updated in the field. for the 17th SS Panzer Grenadier Division in Normandy, France, 1944, consisted of the traditional Dunkel Gelb, Rupe Brown, and Reseda Grim. the stroke, I applied the initial coat of life colour 
road dust. This was to tone down the camouflage and to accentuate the dust that would have accumulated from four months of active constant combat in France, 1944. Decals were added using Tamiya Mark V. As I did not have the decal for the 17th SS Panzer Grenadier Division, I painted it on. After a matte clear coat of Mr. Super Clear from Mr. Hobby, I then began doing some of the chipping using MIG's Dio Dry Brush Paint, chipping colour. The chipping really highlighted the earlier sections that had been chipped away, gave it a real sense of depth and a great worn effect. Using tweezers and a piece of cut sponge, final chipping around some of the edges was completed. The exhaust manifold, the same pattern as the Panzer IV Os J depicting the cooling shroud bottom collar and the cooling tubes was given a base coat of rust. To simulate smoke and residue, it was then coated with eroding rust, the life colour paint, then dark rust, followed by deep rust, then finally some orange marks, and to finish off, burnt jet engine pigments by AK Interactive. Aptalum oil colour paints with AK odorless thinner were combined in recess areas to highlight the detail and really bring the Stuck to life. I used varying degrees of thinner, first not much thinner, mainly oil paint, then mostly thinner and a dub of oil paint. Cotton Q-tips were also used. I hope you enjoyed.
The equipment and tools were painted using life colour weathered wood, also using Dio dry brush paint from Ammo, the gunmetal colour, and finishing off with some SDW Intense Rust 2. Life Colors Rain and Dust Liquid Pigments are one of my go-to's. I think the light coat of dust looks really great. smoke and residue amongst the exhaust and on the barrel, AK pigments, burnt jet engine with some gravel and sand fixer were added. Life colours rust pigments and some sand and gravel fixer by AK were also added on the engine deck. Finally, Life Colours active surface agent set number two particularly the oil selection, was used to create boot prints across the engine deck. I used two types of ammo mud, acrylic mud for dioramas, the light earth ground, as well as the vignette acrylic mud, arid dry ground. I combined these with the dry sea grass, particularly around the wheels and all the lower sections to create that worn, dirty effect. AK Acrylics rubber for the road wheels combined with some burnt umber from the liquid pigments life colour were added to finish off the wheel section. All of the tracks were painted with AK's rust set, rusty tracks. Also the highlights were added with some of the Dio dry brush paint by Ammo gunmetal. Gunmetal was also used around any of the edges to highlight bare metal.
finish off the weathering, a graphite pencil was used on any of the finer points for metal. Clear varnish, glossy varnish was used for any of the glass areas. To finish off the weathering of the Stug, dirt amongst the road wheels was created using Europe Earth coloured modelling pigment by MIG. The 17th SS Panzer Division was formed in October 1943 in France. The division first met the enemy in combat on the 11th of June, just after D-Day. The 17th SS Panzer Grenadier Division was involved with heavy fighting with the 101st Airborne Division and later the 2nd Armoured Division. At the end of the month, the 17th was transferred to Metz for a much needed rest and refit. A great selection of 135 figures were chosen, in particular Panzerart Waffen SS Tankers, Panzerart Waffen SS Tank Mechanics, Bravo 6 Babelwaff, Mini Art German Soldiers at Rest, free out of the box, Mini Art German Tank Crew Africa Corps, with heads adopted, and Armour 35 and Hornet heads. Primer and then those without shirts were given an airbrush of skin colour. My hot glue pen is used to connect the figures onto the jars. I prefer to use jars as it means I can leave figures and come back to them later, um, particularly with different dioramas going on at the same time. I have tried other vices and figure stabilizers, but I prefer the width and grip for the jars. I find masking putty great for blocking off large areas when airbrushing figures. I use the Zero Black colour and also the Blue Queen colour. Soft and hard, comes in the round tins that look like old boot polish. Uniforms were initially airbrushed. A base colour was used, followed by dark shadows including around the trousers and underarm areas and finally highlights from above. used to highlight the shorts and for the figures with majority of skin showing thinner was used with just a little bit of dark red tone this is used to highlight all the darker sections of the skin
I used a few different brands of paints for the face painting and the skin tones. Vallejo brand has wonderful dark red tones. I used a base tone and I wanted a pinker tone also as this is coming out of summer. I also used Ammo Mig's flesh tone set. I particularly like the browner tones here. Great for around the eye areas and around the edges. Also see my six step process YouTube video on basic 135 figure painting. I use a fine Tamiya brush and a head magnifier for all face painting. The chopping board was cut to size, sculptor mould was used across the back as the terrain, Elmer's glue and Mod Podge was used to seal it. I checked the fit of the stroke and then using Woodland Scenic's realistic trees, I updated the tree with some brown wood paint and also green spray paint of various tones. This is the first time that I've tried Ammo's Dio glue. I was a bit concerned when the green moss turned a bluish tinge, but I was pleased when it all dried and it looked great.
really like AK's metallics paint and use the selection to finish off many of the smaller items. I've used UV resin on several dioramas now for water and ice. Available in small and large containers. Please see the Amazon Associates link in the description. I sealed the edge with clear tape, placed the straw and two figures inside and tipped approximately three layers of the UV resin, each time sealed with a UV light in a regular light globe. This was done outside and I was wearing a mask. Camo netting was painted in the same colours as the Stug, having received overspray from when the crew repainted the camouflage. With the crew in place, final water using UV resin needed to be created.
The flowing and splashing water was created using UV resin dribbled over a water bottle covered in cling wrap film. After it hardened using the UV lamp, it was peeled off and connected to the figures using some more UV resin. What do you think? The edge of the water was made clear by painting a light coat of UV resin over it. Vallejo water texture and white paint was used to create water ripples. AK summer bushes was trimmed and added to the camo netting. Black felt liner roll is perfect for absorbing light as a backdrop for photographing models and dioramas. Please see the description for further information.